Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it, and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go, I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Sarah McCarthy, the creator of McCarthy Math Academy. And before we get started, I want to thank you for taking time out of your crazy, busy, nonstop, hectic schedule to join me as we break down today's best standard for math, which happens to be MA.3.NSO.1.3. MA stands for math, 3 means third grade, NSO stands for number sense operations, that's our strand, and then we've got 1.3 for our benchmark, okay? So we're going to, let's take a look at some of the notes that I can take out of this lesson. All right, so in this standard, it says to plot, that means plot a point on a number line. We're going to plot, order, and compare. So ordering means to order numbers in ascending order. That means going from least to greatest. And descending, like in a plane when you're making your descent, you're going from greatest to least. So ascending, least to greatest, descending, greatest to least. For the most part with the standard, I've seen it just focusing on ascending order, least to greatest. But just in case, I would make sure to teach greatest to least as well. Um, we're also comparing, so we're plotting, we're ordering, and we're comparing using the less than, greater than, and equal sign, but they do in this standard, they, who's they? <laughs> there is mention of using this not equal to sign, understanding what it means, okay? We're doing this up to 10,000, whole numbers, by the way. No decimals, no fractions here, just whole numbers. Um, something that I noticed in the example, as you can see, um, these numbers, like 3,475 because we have a four digit number because we have a comma, a nice way to separate and be able to see is using a semicolon to separate. And here's the use of ascending order, bada bing, bada boom. Okay, clarification number one says that instruction should include using an appropri appropriately scaled number line, okay? And in the resources that I have, I made sure to include that. Well, let's just go ahead and jump down. We've got scaled by 50s, 100s, or 1000s. And it says here, within this benchmark, the expectation is to use these symbols, but also to read them. Not just to throw a symbol there, but to be able to read it from left to right. For instance, okay, I'm just gonna put that there because I'm running out of space, but being able to read it saying 3,942 is greater than three. Students need to be able to read it across. That shows that they understand it. Where is this connecting with other things that they're learning in third grade? Well, this will help with, they'll be able to apply what they've learned reading and writing numbers, decomposing and composing four digit numbers, and also true false equations. Okay, some terms. Number line, this is our number line, right? And whole numbers are numbers from zero on that are whole numbers, no decimals, no fractions. Where are they coming from? Well, in second grade, they had to plot, order, and compare. Hey, that's what they gotta do in third grade. But in second grade, they did it with whole numbers up to 1,000. So that's where they're coming from. And next year, they'll have to plot, order, and compare up to 1 million. So your work here, is important because next year they gotta go way higher to a million. Um, all right, what jumped out at me here? There's a couple things actually. Making sure that we're using place value strategies with our number lines. I think this is new. I don't think I noticed this before, but um, horizontal and vertically. So all the examples I'm seeing have a horizontal number line 
but uh, vertically, you know what? When we get to measurement, there might be some vertical representation there too that we'll be able to apply to it. Also, I want to point out that here when they're talking about these connecting benchmarks, this is not the end all be all. These are not the only standards that they're connecting to. They're just showing a few um, because I could make arguments that there's other ones that they could be connecting to. Um, what else? What else? Instructions should not rely on tricks. Students should read the entire statement. Okay. So for instance, I have always taught the whole alligator thing, right? Or the monster or whatever, that the monster wants to eat the bigger number. Now I, in my personal opinion, I think it's totally okay to keep on going with that because it helps to teach kids the direction, but that's not the end all be all. The whole point that they're trying to make is that they need to be able to read it. Okay, maybe they need help with which way the sign goes, but then once they've got it, they need to be able to say, okay, Here's what I got. I threw this sign in right there, which means that 7,309 is greater than 7,039. They have to be able to take it from numbers and symbols and put it into words or put it in, be able to vocalize it to show that they've got it. Not just this sign because it wants the bigger number. That's, that's not good enough reasoning. So in my opinion, you can still use that to help them with the direction, but make sure that they've under, they understand it by how to read it. Hope that makes sense. Um, okay. Here it says it is imperative for teachers to define the meaning of the not equal symbol. Here's how I use it in when I'm teaching and I do in the video lessons too, that I've included for taking on the best. Um, if we had 7,309, and 7,039, and we put those in a place value chart, you would then compare the greatest place values first, right? So we have seven and seven in the thousands place. Those are equal. Three and zero, whoop, in the hundreds place. Those are not equal, and that helps us to compare it. So there's the purpose of our equal sign, which then we can translate back over into this and eventually have them reading it like that, okay? Um, uh, what else, what else jumps out at me? Here's just a task. Whew, okay. I would definitely suggest when you have problems like this to make sure you're teaching students how to break them down, to read each one and identify it and make like first solve it how they correctly compare it and then why because the because for all these is the reason why so the more that we teach them the reason why verbally the better they will be able to apply it to a multiple choice problem like that that's really wordy but it can be done the kids can totally do it i would just definitely model how to break problems down like this all right now that we've gone over the best standard, let's take a look at what you've got for your resources in your membership, um, in your membership, period. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Let's members enter here. Taken on the best. You also have access to 155 if you're a gold member, we'll get there. Which grade? Third grade. Which strand? We are in the NSO strand. And today we're working on NSO.1.3, which is plotting and ordering numbers. Okay, so if you have the bronze package, you have access to the video lessons and the printable student guides that go with it, okay? Um, let me, before I do that. For this one, we I broke the videos down into comparing, place, comparing two numbers using place value blocks. So there's our place value. Comparing two numbers using place value, this is with a place value chart, and comparing two numbers using a number line, and plotting and ordering numbers using a number line. So you can see it's building on each other, each one. You also just have to click over here to get access to your printable resources that go with the guides, all right? That is your bronze membership. So you can see here, I, I took the chance that possibly there could be a descending order kind of question. I don't want to lock them into just ascending order. They should be able to apply it from greatest to least too, in my opinion. Um, all right, then silver. 
silver, you have access to all of these bronze, plus you have the extra practice, the math missions, and math misconception mystery. Click here for your printables. So we start with the video lesson, and then once they finish the lesson, you can have extra practice that is very similar to what we did in the video lesson. Video lesson, extra practice. Video lesson, comparing two numbers using a number line. Extra practice, comparing two numbers using a number line. Definitely check out those video lessons. If you need any help, if you're like, I don't even know how to go about teaching this, you can also preview those video lessons ahead of time and maybe you'll get some tricks, some, not tricks. Maybe you'll get some tips and feel more, I want you feeling confident when you are working with students in the classroom on this. So those videos are totally for you as well to use. Uh, okay, extra practice. Here's our math missions. Use the cards below to create three given numbers. The digit is in the thousands place has been given. So students can take these cards, plug them in anyway, and then they have to plot the numbers and arrange them. So it's taking everything that we've learned in the standard and throwing it into a math mission. Super fun. Math misconception mystery. Use less than, greater than, or equal to to correctly compare these two numbers. I love throwing nines and sixes at students, just so you know, because they kind of, they really got to take time to be like, wait, what? <laughs> so that's why I did that. Um, again, math misconception mystery for the silver package. You have four characters, me dressed up in costumes, four characters solving this problem. Three of them are incorrect, making a common mistake that students usually make. And one of them does have the most reasonable answer. It is great for math discussions and um, great for error analysis in general. It, and it gets, you know what? It allows students to feel comfortable in making mistakes, seeing other people make mistakes and making it a fun environment to analyze mistakes instead of beating themselves up over it. Because in math, they are going to make mistakes. Okay, so for all those printables, you also have answer keys to all of them. This is your math misconception mystery video. Check that out, it's super fun. Let me see, we got Samantha in this one, Paula, June, and Herbert, my favorite. And if you are a gold member, you have not only the bronze video lessons, not only all the extra practice goodies, but you also end the Math Misconception Mystery. You also have access to a mini assessment, the McCarthy Math 155 lessons, and this video, Breaking Down the Best, ad-free, is awesome. So if you have that plan, you'll be able to click there open that up. You can go back to your other resources at any time. Click here. I'm going to show you real quick the mini assessment. You can take a look though. Doop. You can see, oh, look, number four has one that was similar to that one in the, uh, the standard that I showed you. Okay. So definitely something to check out there. And you have the answer key. You also have access to McCarthy Math 155 comparing, plotting and comparing numbers. So you know what? I don't think that there's anything from the common core that translates over into this, but you still, there will be other things that do, which is why I created taking on the best because I knew McCarthy math 155 was not going to meet the needs for the standards that you have now in Florida. That's why we have this, but there is a lot of good stuff there for you. Okay. All right, that's it for ma.3.nso.1.3. And also before we go, let me remind you that what you choose to wake up and do with your life, it really matters. You really matter. I know that this profession is super tough and super exhausting, but it does make a difference. And if nobody else says it today, I believe in you and I think that you're doing an amazing job. The truth is our students, they are the future. And while our time with them, we may never know how our time with them impacts who they become, but we have to trust that we are making a difference, that our contributions will help our students significantly to take steps towards the people that they were born to be. So keep on rocking it. You are awesome, just so you know. And I just wanna thank you again for joining me on this episode of Breaking Down the Best, and I'll see you soon.
Bye. Okay, so I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm gonna ask you to do one more thing, okay? If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best <laughs> of my ability. All right, for real now, bye.